Lord. Amen. We're glad to see you tonight on this very rainy Wednesday night, but we appreciate you making a second effort to be here in the house of the Lord. Appreciate those that are joining us online and also for our children and youth that are upstairs as well. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord and thank the Lord for that good rain. Amen. 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 Uh, that is falling out there. We thank the Lord. Amen. Uh, we're glad to see you. And tonight as we get started, let me make a, a few announcements. we got some special things that are going on right after church tonight. Right, at, right after church tonight, I'm going to announce this before I forget about it. The kids have got like this little, uh, what you call it, cone of ice. Y'all you know, know what ice, what them cone? Snow cone, yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> snow cone, little snow cone truck is going to be there for like the kids and everything. It's the end of their unit party. And so anybody that wants a snow cone after church, they, it's going to be parked right here because of the rain. It's only parked under the, 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 the pavilion right here. So if you would like one, it's free, so you can help yourself. You can get whatever flavor uh, that you want to. Get one in both hands. Uh, go ahead and help yourself if you want. But uh, anyway, that'll be underneath there right after church uh, if you'd like that. We, so I uh, invite you to get one of them if you will. Uh, also, it's the last day for these orders for the T-shirts. If you're wanting a T-shirt, please make sure that you see uh, Sister Amanda or Sister Nikki. Um, they were also sitting out front there taking orders. If you were wanting one, they're kind of trying to get that finished up as well. Also want to remind you about Vacation Bible School coming up next Wednesday. Next Wednesday night, we will not have church on, on Wednesday night. It's, it's the 4th of July week but also because they're going to be decorating that entire week and preparing for Vacation Bible School, which will start that following Sunday. So no, there will be no Wednesday night service a week from today on the 6th of July. Um, now this Sunday, everything will be as normal. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Sunday night, we're going to be having uh, uh, some, some special singing. I've already talked to several, but if there's anybody that may want to sing a special need to get with me, we're going to have some special singing, and then we're going to have a peanut bowl right after church Sunday night. So come and to be with us uh, for that time of fellowship while well, we've done this last year, and we're looking forward to that this year. If you're not, if you're going, if you're not going to be out of town for the 4th of July, but then Wednesday we won't have any church on the 6th, They'll be prepared and decorating for Vacation Bible School. And then on the, the 10th of July, uh, we'll have morning service. And then that night, Vacation Bible School will kick off. And it'll run Sunday night through Wednesday night. And we want to especially invite everybody to come back on that Wednesday night. Adults, everybody, they'll be having uh, food and water slides and all of that stuff outside on that Wednesday night. So we got a lot that is coming up in the next few weeks. So uh, I just hope that you'll plan to be there and to be a part of those things. Amen. Did I miss anything, Amanda, on there? Did I miss anything, any of the other announcements? You got them all. But again, it's so good to, for you to be here tonight. If you're able to, let's stand up all over the house and we're going to go and get into worship tonight. And uh, let's open up with a word of prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for that wonderful rain that has fallen outside. But thank you, God, for your presence that is in this house, God. And, Lord, let it be like that former and the latter rain. And let it just come down. And, Lord, just cover our hearts and our souls tonight. God, anybody that may be here, God, or maybe somebody is watching tonight online. God, I pray that you just minister to them. Minister to them in song. Minister to them in word. And maybe tonight, God, that they'll, they'll receive a word that they've been needing. God, I just ask that you speak to your people. In Jesus' name, we give you this service. And everybody say it. Amen and amen.
And for the, our text, I want us to look at Exodus chapter 14. And we probably all know this story. You have heard it. I have preached on it many times when Moses uh, leads the children of Israel across the Red Sea. You've heard that story before. I know if you've ever been uh, to in church any length of time or in Sunday school. And we know that God called Moses. He went down to Egypt and he led God's people out. And it's interesting that after the ten plagues, Pharaoh released them and they make their way from Egypt and from their bondage. Uh, the Bible says that they're heading, if you study this, they're kind of heading south really at the moment. And the Bible says that God does something strange here, or he does to me in chapter 14 of Exodus. Let's read verses 1 through 4. If you've got your Bible, it's on the screen. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses... And he said, speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before at that place right there, Pathoroth, between Migdal and the sea, opposite of Baal Zephon, you shall camp before it by the sea. One translation, if you study this, they were heading in one direction. He actually told them to change directions or to turn around. There was a change in their direction. And he positioned them particularly by the sea. They were camped out right next to the Red Sea. Now let's read the rest of it. It says, verse 3, 4, Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness is closed, <clears throat> has closed them in. In other words, they were going one direction and God actually turned them around in a different direction. And so, but it was for a purpose. He says, he says, then the Pharaoh is going to think that they're bewildered by the land and the wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and they did so. Let's stop right there. You can leave your Bibles open because we're going back to that in just a minute. Let's pray over the reading of God's Word. Heavenly Father... We come before you tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to stand on your this stage, God, and proclaim, proclaim your holy word. I ask for your anointing. I ask for your touch. And I pray that this word would just minister to us. Minister maybe to somebody that is in this house tonight or somebody that is watching. Help us, Lord, to learn in this situation, God, to be still and to be silent and to wait on you. Lord, we love you in the name of Jesus. We ask and pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. amen and amen. If you study this passage a little bit, you'll find out that the, Moses was leading the people. He was leading them in one direction. And then uh, God says, I want you to change directions. And he says, it's even going to look to Pharaoh like you are lost, like you are bewildered, like you do not even know the way out. Uh, notice, did he, you notice what he said there? And he said, I want to take you to a specific place, and you're going to camp there next to the Red Sea. Now, I can imagine, now he's leading one, one to two million uh, Hebrews uh, out, and I can imagine they're thinking like, well, why are we going in this direction now? Why have we made all of a sudden a sudden turn or a change in direction, all of a sudden a, a sudden back, or maybe some backtracking? Why are we going in this direction? But it's interesting that their, their setback was actually a setup, amen? Right. See, God knew all along what he was doing. Man. He said, we're going to get you out. He, he's speaking to Moses, I suppose, and he, he said, we're going to look like you're lost, and Pharaoh's going to see it, and he said, I'm going to begin to lure him out there, and he's going to begin to think about, well, he can come back there, and he can take y'all in, and he says, then I'm going to do something miraculous in which my glory will be revealed. And we know the story. That's exactly what happened. Pharaoh's going to come out after them. He fell right into God's hands. See, the Bible says that the king of a heart is in the hands of God. God knew what he was doing. And really, he was using the Israelites somewhat for bait, if you will, to lure Pharaoh out. But now this is the problem with that. Listen to where I'm going with this. This is the problem with that for the Israelites who were not privy to all of God's plans. They didn't fully understand what God was doing. They didn't fully understand that God would somewhat use them as bait to lure old Pharaoh back out there. They, all they knew is that they saw that Egyptian army coming after them. 
All they knew that they were stuck, camped up now against the Red Sea, and they didn't have anywhere to run to. They had nowhere to hide. They were backed into a corner, and they had nowhere to go. I want you to listen to what I'm about to say to you. God will back you into a corner on purpose. Sometimes God will back you into a corner on purpose. It's exactly what he did with the Hebrews. He told them, oh, wait a minute, I want you to turn and go this way, and you're going to camp right next to the sea over here, where, where you don't have any other free range to go, Brother Terrell. He said, I want you to sit right there. But he says, I know that old Pharaoh's going to come. They weren't not the Hebrew children, that million, that million, two million people. They wouldn't didn't understand all that. They weren't privy to all of God's plans. All they knew that they was in a mess now because the enemy was coming. Friend, listen to me. Sometimes God will back you into a corner on purpose. What do I mean by that? I mean that he'll put you in a place where you're out of right. options. Right. Where you have done everything that you Come possibly on. can do and you have no ability yes, whatsoever Amen. to change the situation yes. or to change the circumstances. That's being in a back into a corner. Amen. That you are out of options, Brother Michael, and you are powerless to do anything about your current circumstance or your current situation. God will do that on a purpose. Amen. He did that to the Israelites for a purpose and he reveals it to us there in verse 4. He said, I'm going to harden old Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue you. He said, but here's the reason. I'm going to gain honor over Pharaoh and over his army that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Not only that, at the end of the chapter, we're going to read it in a minute ago, it talks about how he also gained honor over the Israelite people, over his very own people. Listen to this statement that I'm about to make. It is only, it is only in impossible situations that God can truly demonstrate that he is Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. It is only in impossible situations that God can truly demonstrate right. He is Amen. Lord. Amen. Think about it. Amen. In situations that you can handle on your own, Amen. in situations that you can handle in your own strength or with your own intellect, often God does not get the credit and the recognition right. that He deserves. Right. Amen. Right. Oh, but listen to me. But when you get into a situation where you are back into a corner and there is no way out, let me tell you, when that sea begins to part and when you begin to make where a way becomes where there is, where when he makes a way when there seems to be no way, can I tell you something? He gets all the glory. Amen. Sometimes God will back us into a corner that he may demonstrate to us that he is truly God. It is in those difficult places. He positioned them. Notice that. He tells them the direction to go, where to be. And he said, then I'm, guess what? Then I'm going to leave Pharaoh right there come after on. you. Yeah, come on. He just used them as bait to right. bring them out there. Amen. Whoo. Got to do that sometimes so he can demonstrate to you Amen. that he is Lord of all. And there may be somebody that is in this house tonight that you're there. Come on. You're at your own Red Sea. You've been backed into a corner. You are out of options. You have done everything possible that you can to fix your situation, to change your situation, to get out of your situation. And now you are left with nowhere to turn. First of all, let me tell you this, amen. Your setback back is just a setup when it comes to God, amen. What you see is a setback. What you see is a defeat. Oh, when God is on your side, He can turn it into a setup for His glory and for His honor, amen. But what do you do? What do you do when you get stuck in a place like that? When you're backed into a corner, when you're out of options, when there's nothing in your power to change the situation or the circumstances, and we just have to wait on God to show up. What do you do? Amen. Look at with me in verse 10 now of that same chapter that we read. It says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, 
Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us out, uh, taken us away to die in the wilderness? Uh, why have you dealt with us? So dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we could serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses instructed the people. He says, do not be afraid. But he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your Peace. Right. I just want to throw this. This is not in my notes, but it was something else. It's really a little bit of a different sermon, but I want to throw this out there. Sometimes God will back you into a corner so he can defeat some things in your life that have been holding on to you for a very long time. Sometimes God will put you in places where you are stuck so he can deal with some things that you ain't dealt with. Yet. And he says, look, I'm fixing to deal with them Egyptians he said, you're going to see them no more. Because when I do Lord, something, I'm going to do it all the way. Yes, you just a food for thought on that. But I want you to think about this. The enemy was coming after them, we read here in this text. It was just a matter in their eyes. It was just a matter of time until it was all over. And they were certainly going to kill them. Old Pharaoh wasn't going to let them live if he caught up to them. They just knew that they were going to be killed. And just like all of us do, we do the same thing. Guess what the people began to do? Come on. They began to do this right here. They began to complain. They began to cry out. To, and they says, uh, they began to cry out over and over again. Oh, we're going to die. The end is near. We should have never left. Uh, and they just went on and on and on. Why this? I told you, Moses, we should have never left. We should have stayed there. But I want you to notice what Moses told them in that situation when they were back into a corner and they were constantly doing this right here. What did he say to them? Verse 14, he said, first of all, he said, stand still. Don't go running off nowhere. And then secondly, at the end of that verse, what did he say? You shall hold your peace. In other words, he said, be quiet. Amen. He said, stand still. He said, be still and be silent. Don't say that again. He said, he said, children of Israel, be still and be silent. What was Moses saying unto them? We could sum it up with what we read in Psalms chapter 46. Uh, when it, we read this, be still and know that I am God. I said, that's what he was telling them. He says, oh, just hang on. Be still. Stop panicking. Stop trying to think that you can run away from this problem. Come on. He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and be silent. Why is that important for us to remember? Why is it important for us to remember in situations that there's times we just need to be still and we need to be silent before God? When we get back into a corner, why do we need to remember this important instruction of being still and being silent? I'll tell you why. When we are still and silent, we can better receive God's yes, direction. God. When we get still and we get silent before God, yes. we can better receive His instruction or His direction. Look at verse 15 of, of the chapter we've been working on. It says this, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward... But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Amen. I think it's interesting to note here and that God asked Moses why he was crying out. Now, I was reading a little commentary on this and I was thinking about this. There might be what we might call a little bit of a, a missing verse. If we don't read that Moses cries out to, uh, to the Lord. We read that he is quieting the people. He is stealing the people and telling them to be quiet. But do you know what? He could have been just as unsettled as they are. <clears throat> Think about it. It's easy to speak those directions to be still or to be silent and, watch and see that 
He is God, but you know what? It's a lot harder when the pressure's on. Amen. Right. It's one thing for me to get up here and to talk about it, to be still, to, to, to be still and know that He is God. Oh, to be silent and get before Him and to wait and to listen patiently. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing when the pressure's on. Right. It's another thing when the deadline is coming and you're running out of time and, and uh, you get that bad doctor's report and you need an answer, amen? Whatever the case may be, when the, top, the, the, the pressure's on, when the decision must be made, when the deadline's coming and the clock is ticking, it can be a whole different story. Right. Yes, it can be hard to walk out those instructions of waiting on the Lord, but that's exactly where you need to be and that's exactly where you can receive what you need. Amen. Now, the essence of those two verses right there, don't be offended with how I'm about to say this. As he begins in verse 15 and 16, this is the essence of how God, I'm going I'm to put it in my, the way that I understand that. He said, shut up, Moses, and listen. <laughs> put the verse back up there so they don't get offended. <laughs> verse 15. Why do you cry after me? Tell the children to go forward. Hush and listen. Hush and look at your neighbor and say, hush and listen. I know, ladies, you've already been telling them that. You've told them that before, haven't you? Amen. Hush and listen. Amen. Sometimes we need to hush and listen. It's very hard to hear from God when you're not listening. Right. See, because when we get in trouble, we can be like the Israelites. And guess what we can do? We begin to run off at the mouth. We begin to complain. We can begin to talk about the what is. We begin to ask the, the why is this happening to me? And the, the I told you so's that begin to come out. And everything else uh, that we think of will start pouring out of this old mouth. Amen. Let me ask you something. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody that would not hush and wouldn't shut up? Don't look at your spouse. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody that would not hush? Come on now. For... <laughs> Woo, I knew y'all would get this one, amen. I knew all the married people would get that one right there. Amen. For there, listen, for there to be efficient and effective communication, there must be listening, which requires somebody to be still and to be silent. Right. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. For there to be effective communication, you can apply this where you want it, amen. <laughs> For there to be effective communication, and it requires listening, which means somebody's got to be still and somebody's got to be silent, amen. Yeah. It's just the same in your relationships in your, uh, between the husband and wife. And it is no different with God. Amen. We will often come before God and we will tell God of our problems. Come we on. will tell Him of our complaints. And we will explain to Him. Yeah. We will explain to God come on. how He can resolve our problems yeah. with just a snap of come His on. finger. Yes, Woo. Right. But often... We will fail to patiently listen to the, for the voice of truth which re reveals the directions to our next steps. Amen. Oftentimes we are very good about telling God how He could fix it, how He could get us out of this, complaining about everything that we are going through. We talk about the, 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 um, the, the Hebrew children and all the whining and the complaining they did. Man, they flesh just like we do the same thing. Come on. And oftentimes we neglect to really listen yes. to the voice of truth that will reveal the directions for our Amen. next yes, steps. Lord. Oh, me. Think about that. Yes. What did we establish at the beginning of this message? That God had a plan. Yes. God had a plan. God's the one that told them to change the direction. God's the one that told them, I want you to go camp out over here. Right by the Red Sea, God had this plan. He's the one that told them that. He said, my setback for you is really a setup for my glory. Right. 
Can I tell you something? In the same way, I'm going to make this clear. God has a plan for you. Come on. You may be backed up to a Red Sea. You may be backed up into a corner right now. But you listen to me right now. Yes, Lord. The sovereign God has a plan for your life. Amen. He has not failed. Lord. And what you're going through has not escaped His sovereignty. I'm going to say that again. What you are going through has not escaped His sovereignty tonight. Yes, and just like He had a plan for this, He's got a plan for you. There ain't nothing in this world no sickness, no devil in hell can fail the plans of God. Amen. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for you. Therefore, it would be wise when you're back into a corner uh -huh. to be still and listen to the one who's got the plan. Amen. When you're back into a corner and you don't know what else to do, it would be wise to, to truly listen to the one who is in control and to listen for his direction of what to do next. Notice I said listen for his direction. Everybody say direction. direction. Listen for his directions, not just look for the easy way out. Listen for his directions. Don't just look for the easy way right. out. Because most of us, I want to read this because, boy, this was good to me. Come on. Most of us call ourselves listening. But in reality, we're just looking for the easy way out. We don't really want to hear from God. We really don't want to hear what God has to say. We just want a quick fix right. to our problem. Right. We just simply want Him to say that it is over. Amen. We are looking for the exit door, and that is when we miss His instructions yes. and His directions. <coughs> Understand something. God's directions will always require your faith to be engaged. Yes. Amen. God's directions to you will always require your faith to be engaged. We are always looking for the exit door. That's right. Just get me out of here, God. Yes, God. That's, the, that's oftentimes the thing that we will be consumed with. What is the easiest and the quickest way out of my problems? Amen. Listen to me right now. God is not interested in the easy Come way. On. He's Amen. interested in His plan for your life. Amen. Amen. He's not interested in making life just simply easy for you. Giving you the easy way. He's interested in His plan and His will for your life. Thank you, Lord. And as soon, the sooner that we grab hold of that, the better. And see, God's got a plan for your life. And when you get in those corner situations, He's got directions for you as well. Right. He had some directions for them old Hebrews, didn't He? Amen. Amen. He's got directions to you. But understand something. That when God gives you directions, it will always require your faith to be engaged. Yes, Lord. In verse 15, looking at that again, he told them, he said, Moses, tell the children of Israel to go forward. Yes. Forward. They were camped out by the Red Sea. That's it. There was water just as far as they could see going forward. Come on. There, there was water. As far as the eye could see, how could they possibly go forward? Come on. God gave them an instruction that required faith. Amen. Consider what God told Moses. He said, Moses, step up to the Red Sea and stretch your rod out. That required an act of faith as well, didn't it? That's it. That's it. Because I don't read them anywhere in the Scriptures before that, prior to that, where God parted water. And anybody walked across on dry land later on, Elijah did, Elisha did, the prophets did, but not before that. This was something impossible that had never been done. And God said, I want you to walk up that Red Sea, stick out your, your hands and the rod that I have given you, and just watch and see. Thank you, it required an act of faith. That was direction that required action based on faith. Listen to me carefully, friend. God did not give them the easy way out. He gave them a path to walk yes. by faith. Yes, Lord. When he split the sea, everybody, oh yeah, he split the sea. He gave it wasn't just easy, it wasn't an easy way out. Right. That was a path in which they had to walk by faith. Amen. 
Friend, it took faith to walk down in that dry riverbed. Come on. Yeah. That's right. Or the scripture, that's dry seabed. That's right. It took faith Amen. to do that. If you read about the, the if you study and read through the Old Testament and about the Israelites and things you go, they were a very superstitious and a very fearful right. people. There's interesting little superstitions and things in there, things that they believe is very interesting. They were very fearful people. And in order for them to walk into this dry seabed where the, it says there was a wall of water on the right and a wall of water on the left, that required faith where you can yeah. think of it or not. Come on. Think about it. As you're walking up to that, all the wind, because the Bible says it's done through the wind. The wind's rushing and blowing like it was out of the night, just a blowing. Their hair ladies was blowing everywhere. <laughs> Y'all have been mad. Your hair do got messed up. God, ain't you got another way of parting the sea besides some hair? With the wind blowing my hair. Woo! Michael got his hair blue slam off when he was coming in. Praise the Lord. But there was a wall of water on the right. There was a wall of water on the left. That's right. And don't you know? Think about it. That they were thinking about. Well, what if? What if that thing comes down? Yeah. That's right. Y'all would have thought the same thing. If you think about it, we'd have been in them situations. What, what if it closes before we get to the other side? Come on. What if, what if a shark comes swimming across through there or something? He's going to stop. What if? Them walking through that thing, that was an act of faith. Amen. Amen. God has got some directions for you. But I want you to understand something. The directions that he has, it is going to call if your faith has got to be engaged to follow Amen. his instructions. God's got some instructions for you when you get back into a corner. You've got to be willing to listen and you've also got to, to engage your faith. He's not going to give you the easy way out. He's right. going to give you a path to walk by faith. We're no different than them to get to the other side. To get out of where you are, I'm telling you tonight, it's going to require faith. We must truly listen for His directions and then be willing to walk by faith where He leads. Make sure you're not just looking for the easy way out. That is not listening. Be careful that you do not acquire selective hearing. Come on. Y'all know what that is? Yes, sir. You ever told your spouse that? You got selective hearing. Yes, what do you say? You only hear what you want to hear. Yes, Come on now. Selective hearing. Do y'all think that's a real thing? You've seen your spouse do that or your husband or your wife yes, do that? Sir. They got selective hearing. Do you know what? We'll do the same thing with God. Yes, right? We will do the same thing with God. God. What do you mean by that, Pastor? That's when we're just listening for what we want to hear. Right. That's when we are listening for just what we want to hear That's from it. God. That's it. Oh, man. Come on now. Come on. We, we're looking, we're listening for Him to say, oh, just, just, just leave. Just quit. Just yeah, walk yeah. away. We're, yeah. we're looking for the easy way out. Come on. We'll look for the easy way out. We're just waiting on God to give us an out. And listen to me. When you have that mindset, when you are just listening selectively, you're just listening for what you want to hear, you're not really open to God's instruction. Right. You're not listening yeah. for God's instruction. You're not open for Him to say, wait. Yeah. You're not open for Him to say, keep fighting. Or give it another chance. Or go the extra mile. Or forgive. Yes, God. You're right. not open to it because you're not even listening for it. Amen. If you're not careful, listen to me, friend. You'll have selective hearing. You'll just be looking for the That's answer right. you want. That's it. Instead That's of God. really asking God for His direction. Amen. You'll be just trying to get what you want That's out right. of Him. Woo, that was good right there. That's Amen. good preaching right there. That's good right. stuff. Amen. That was good. I was just writing that down the day. God's got direction for you when you're backed into a corner. Yes, God. You've got to be still and quiet enough to listen yes, Lord. to the one that's got a plan. Don't expect it to be the easy way out Come on. with God. Yes, God. Don't expect it to be the easy way out with God. Whatever he tells you to do, 
it's going to require you to have faith in Him and to trust Him. Amen. It's going to, it's not, it's going to be, oh, he's on, no. The path God's going to lead you on, it will require your faith. It will require you to trust Him. Therefore, you've got to get rid of that selective hearing. Yes, Lord. You've got to throw it out. You want to get out of that corner you in? You better open them ears up tonight. Amen. Yes, Lord. If you're in a corner tonight, you need to open up them ears. Say, Lord, I need to hear from you. Yes, God. Let me get my own prerogative. Let me get my own uh, will out of the way. Let me surrender to your will and what you have for me to do. And if I've got to walk uh, by faith across that Red Sea, then, then so be it, God. Yes, Lord. I want your will over simply an easy way out. Yes, God. I want your will. Yes, Lord. You get back in the corner. He's got instruction. Now listen to me. When you walk by faith, I said we can't please Him without faith. That's right. Yeah. So when we honor Him and walk by faith, listen to the end of the story. It says this right here. It says, So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hands of the Egyptians. They walked across there on dry land by faith. And it says, And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When they got to the other side, we know that the Egyptians were coming through the same way. But God caused the tires of their chariots to fall off and it got stuck. Guess what? Then he closed the water right on top of them and turned them into fish food, just like that. It says, Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done. See, not only did Egypt get glory, uh, uh, bring honor to them, say, hey, he's the real God, also to his people, so they feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Amen. That was, there is a reward for when we walk by faith yes, and we trust God and we follow His directions. Amen. Though it may be difficult, though it may be not what we wanted to hear, when we will listen and we will honor the voice of God, I'm telling you right now, He's going to safely yes, bring you to the other Amen. side. Amen. But also let me say this to you, because God has direction. Maybe tonight you are looking for directions. I come back to tell you that God has directions for you. If you need direction, you need your back in that corner, I'm telling you tonight, God's got direction if you're willing to listen. But the second part of this is, when you've got that direction, you've got to be willing to follow those directions. Because oftentimes we say, that, yeah, I want, I want to do what God wants me to do. Then when we uh, find out what God wants me to do, uh, we don't want to do what God wants me to do no more. Let me read this particular passage real quick and we'll close about a man who received instruction from God but he did not heed the voice of God. Because there's some of you, God maybe has already given you some direction but you didn't like what God had to say. Come on now. Sometimes God will give you direction but you don't like what God has to say. Well, let me do it my own way. I'll tell you something right now. That's, that will cost you. Why don't you listen to how it costs old Saul? I thought this was interesting. This passage of Scripture, I've read it before, preached from this before, and it come to my mind today as I talk about heeding the voice of God, listening, us listening to God and really seeking Him. And I want you to listen to how Samuel starts his address unto Saul in this chapter. He said, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over His people, over Israel. Now therefore, listen to what he says, Heed the voice of the words of the Lord. If God has given you direction, if the Spirit of God has been giving you direction and reaffirming things from His written Word unto you, let me encourage you, heed the voice of the Lord. Amen. Heed the voice of the Lord. I have been there, and I have been there before, and I have said, well, I don't really like that. Let me do it my own way. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. Right. Not that God, not that God purposely does that. Right. That He says, "Oh, you didn't listen to me. I'm going to stick it to you now." No, He told me to go the other direction, Brother Terrell, because He knew what it would cost me if I didn't. Amen. Amen. He was trying to lead me in the right direction, but sometimes we get so hard headed we don't want to listen to Him because we think, "Oh, there's an upfront cost." But if we would just trust Him to begin with, we would find out it'd be a lot better. Right. Then going our own way because it's going to cost us a lot more going our own way being hard headed. Listen, I'll read this quickly and then we're going to we got ice. We got slushies out here to eat. 
He said this. Now therefore heed the voice of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts. I will punish uh, Amalek for what he did to Israel. How he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack, uh, attack Amalek. And utterly, everybody say utterly, utterly, destroy all that they have and do not spare them. This was God's instruction. This was his judgment on a very wicked group of people. He said, I want you to kill both men, women, infants, nursing children, uh, ox, sheep, camel, donkey. You leave nothing. Amen. Utterly. That was his word. That was his commandment unto the people. It says, so Saul gathered the people together. He numbered them, uh, 200,000 foot shoulders, blah, 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 that. It says, and Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay it in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, he says, y'all better get out of here. Y'all were a friend to us, so we're going to have mercy on it, on you. But you better get out of here. We're going kill to you, kill you too. And then it says, and Saul attacked the Amalekites. And it says, which is east of Egypt. He also took Aga, king of the Amalekites. What does it say? Alive. Is that what God told him to do? No. He said to utterly destroy this group of people. But Saul said, I don't really like that idea. That don't make sense to me. I think that I'll keep the king alive. And then he goes on to say this. And all the people with the edge of the... And the other destroyed everybody else. Right. But Saul and the people spared Aga, that's the king. And listen, the best of the sheep, the best of the oxen, the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good and, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. He said, well, it don't make, it ever, make sense to kill the king and to kill the best of the sheep and the, the, uh, uh, all these livestock. I said, I think that we'll keep the king alive. We'll just put him in prison. He'll, he'll be a POW, a prisoner of war. And then we'll just keep these good animals as well. I like that plan better. But that's not what God told him right. to do. That's not the directions that God spoke through the prophet Samuel. And the Bible says, we won't, we won't go there and read all of it, but the Bible says that Samuel later comes over and Saul is all proud that he has done what the Lord, he said, I have done what the Lord has told me to do. And Samuel says, well, what is the bleeding of sheep that I hear and the lowering of cattle? Amen. There might have been something wrong with Saul's hearing, but there wasn't nothing wrong with Samuel's hearing. Amen. Saul didn't want to, to listen and heed the voice of God. And I'm going to tell you something. Guess what happened? The Bible says that it cost him the kingdom and that the, from that point the kingdom was torn from his hand. From right then, God sent Samuel the prophet down to Jesse's house to anoint David to become the next king after Saul. It cost him. Listen to me right now. God's got a plan for your life. God's got a direction and I'm telling you right now, He'll give you those directions if we're willing to take time to listen and to follow Him by faith. Amen. But the most important thing that I could tell you would be this. Heed His voice. Amen. To heed His voice. It might be difficult in the moment. It may be so hard and you think, how am I going to leave this behind? How am I going to give this up? How am I... How am I how can God be leading me that in that direction? You may not quite understand it. I'm telling you, He'll give you instructions, but you'll have to walk it by faith. And I want to encourage you not to, to heed His voice by faith. Yes, Lord. Heed His voice by faith. I have found that I'd rather be following God, listening to Him, than trying to do my own thing any day of the week. Yes, Anytime, Brother LaRue, I tried to go my own way, you know. I always made a mess of it. Amen. Come on. Yes, Lord. Always cost me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always was a lot more painful. Amen. I want to encourage you tonight. I don't know if you're stuck in a, back in a corner right now. I'm telling you right now, heed the voice of God. He'll speak. Just a matter of time. He's going to give you direction. Then you're going to have to walk by faith and you're going to have to trust Him. Thank you, Lord. You're going to have to trust Him and He knows exactly what He is doing. You may not like it. It might be uncomfortable. Come on. But I'm telling you, when you honor him by faith, he'll bring you to the other side. Amen. Right where you need to be. Thank you, Lord.
When you stand to your feet all over the house, come on to the music tonight, amen, as we close. As I close, I want to ask you two things tonight. Two things I want to ask you. And I want to invite you to come and to surrender it. I want to ask you, or first of all, are you backed into a corner tonight? Are you somebody that is in a situation where you have tried everything that you possibly can, but you're out of options, and you desperately need direction from the Lord? Can I invite you to, to come tonight and to pray and say, Lord, I need your direction. You know where I'm at. I just want, I've been doing a lot of talking. I just want to listen to you tonight. I want to take the next few not just minutes, but the next few days and listen. Turn off the TV and the radio and spend a little bit of time in His Word. Listen for God to speak. Not just what you want to hear, but what? Say, God, I want Your will. But not only that. Maybe you're in here tonight and God has given you some direction for your life. Maybe God's made something very clear to you and you are wrestling with that. You don't like it. Like Saul, that don't make sense to me. I think my plan would be a little bit better. I'm telling you right now, it's not. I hate to hurt your feelings, but your plan is not better than his plan. No matter how it may look. If you're having a problem and you're wrestling with what God is leading you to, then let me encourage you. Say, Lord, I surrender again to your will. Help me to lay this old self down. I'm going to follow in your way. Maybe you're in one of those places tonight. Maybe you want special prayer. Maybe you just want to come to the altar tonight and lay it at His feet again. Tomorrow you might have to do it again. Be still and be silent. Amen. As we sing, the altar is open tonight.